What's interesting for us over the last few months is that uh, I know that as an insurer you guys have been on a journey of discovery, particularly from a technology perspective. Uh, similarly, in uh, the Sarago space, we've been obviously uh, leveraging off some of those initiatives that you guys have put in place. The lockdown, has it fast tracked your strategy at all? I think it fast tracked a lot of people's um, approaches in terms of where they are in their business and technology specifically. So I think um, we were quite fortunate that we could uh, go remotely quite quickly. Um, the same with your team. I mean, you've got a, quite a big team that are used to being based at the office um, all the time. Uh, change and, and disruption like COVID, you, you're forced to think about how you operate quite quickly. Um, I think we handled it quite efficiently and we, we, uh, we made sure that the guys have got last mile connectivity which has become a huge demand and uh, importance for, for everyone quite quickly. And then I think it's getting used to, to operating from home and having the same productivity and more requests for meetings, being able to service your customers a lot better, a lot quicker which has become the norm. People expect a lot better service now because they're used to, to getting people um, uh, in a conversation. Yeah. <clears throat> so one of, the th one of the key things for a business like Sarago is that we uh, are completely dependent upon the role of the intermediary. And um, there is a, a suspicion in the market at the moment that uh, the whole concept of uh, fast-tracking technology and getting the whole digital experience in line uh, could possibly lead to some sort of confusion, concern or disintermediation in terms of that particular market segment. Yeah. Any thoughts along that? Well, I've got lots of thoughts about it. I think um, our business firstly is broker-based uh, and so is Sorago. Um, and, and whatever we do in terms of technology, we'd like to support the broker and enable them as part of the, let's call it the digital journey. Uh, I think it's complexity of product is also important here because if you have a fairly simple product, then you can go directly to market. But I don't think that's going to be as successful in our environment as people sometimes believe. I think our environment is broker-based, broker-driven. Technology is great for tools and we, we want to find ways where we can give that tools in the hands of our brokers and our customers. Make sure that we squeeze out inefficiencies, we become better at what we do. We use artificial intelli intelligence to help us in terms of rating or looking at underwriting risk, etc. But that can be passed on to a broker level and to a customer as well. Better risk management, that should be the future, not disintermediating. So I think um, some companies might have a very specific approach just to do direct business and squeeze out an intermediary or disintermediate. Uh, I think um, our approach will always be to give tools to the brokers to have an enhanced customer offering through to his customer and make sure that if we have a digital journey that we can pass that on for our brokers use. Otherwise, everyone's focusing currently in terms of digital journeys and making sure that the customer can have an app, etc. And that's great. That's great. Um, but that technology barrier and, and cost is, is quite high. So what we would like to do is to uh, obviously pass on that benefit as much as possible from an underwriter back to the broker, back to the, the customer side. So that's going to be a focus area for us. Yeah, so I think one of the things is, is uh, as you mentioned, is the digital journey and the ability for us to, to leverage the services and time of an intermediary yeah to onboard quicker than normal. So at the moment, historically, I think if we go back in terms of the insurance industry per se, we've been slow reactors, we haven't been early adopters in terms of, and I'm talking about industry in general, that we haven't been early adopters in terms of uh, the technology aspects. And you still go and have a look at some of the life companies that uh, are onboarding by paper applications and all those kind of processes. Uh, as part of our journey of discovery for Argo space, we're also looking at uh, different product lines and different um, insurance categories. Um, your technology will support those kind of initiatives? Yeah, I think a, a case in point is probably the, one of the products that you brought to market, Pandemic Shield, quite recently. So from thinking about the product to putting it live into environment was 55 days. Now, um, one part of that is also the complexity of the product, but the, the second part of that and the most important part is that we had the platforms and the in-house capabilities to take on the product and extend it actually to where a customer can live on a website, sign, um, on, uh, including his broker in the process, broker appointments, debit authorizations, and get a policy issued within hours. So we took a product from concept to market in 55 days. Um, it was done 
in conjunction with yourself as the underwriting manager Sirago, uh, making sure that the teams are upskilled to underwrite the product and handle claims, etc. And that's a very good example of where base technology can be ramped up to support a process quite quickly. And I'm not saying it should be the, the de facto standard for any, any product to take to market, but in, in your case, uh, is going to allow you to take on new products, both on the short term and, and maybe on the life side of the of the of, of the uh, business. I think uh, currently in the industry, I see a lot of short term and life guys coming closer to each other, and um, even we have a micro insurance license that's out there that allow for both short term and life to be written in terms of the license. So I think um, when we have a very good engine like Sorago, we should look at opportunities to provide other products in there as well, because the base set of skills. <coughs> on the technology that's going to allow you to interact seamlessly with your broker and your customers is already there. So, in theory, a universal application in terms of the underwriting criteria <clears throat> and an easier onboarding for the policyholder and everything will work towards making sure that the advice process within the broker space yeah. will be underpinned. For sure. Okay. So I think, yet again, complexity of product will drive the process, and that really is where the journey part comes in. But again, a case in point, the pan Pandemic Shield product that you took to market was exactly that. You're actually giving that one centralized customer journey on the web, and each and every of the brokers can get their customer onto the portal and, and take up the product. Um, and, and that's easy. They don't have to go duplicate the technology. In that scenario, there's no additional cost that's passed on to any other brokers, which if they have to do that, obviously would have had a, a massive effect in terms of the onboarding. So I think one of the key things is we need to sort of uh, separate the different brokerages in terms of size, capacity and, and, and skill sets. I think um, in the Sorago space in particular, we have uh, mostly the independent IFAs. And uh, I think they're going to have to definitely look at the way they do things going forward. I think the role of advice is, has to completely uh, be differentiated in terms of where they were, the way they were doing things prior to lockdown and the way they need to do things going forward. I think from a risk perspective, it's important that the brokers and the advisors start looking at multiple lines of insurance so that they can actually go and give advice to a particular individual or entity or company um, based on their skills so that they can have a look at it from A to Z as opposed to in sort of in silos because I think the ability to to advise or give advice on silos is now going to be nullified in that space. From an underwriting perspective, the incubation model works superbly well in our environment. I think was uh, one of the things we do do is we leverage off the expertise and the skills that the insurer brings to the party. So I've personally been involved with Generic in terms of an incubation model where they, they have a whole sort of array of services and systems and processes that can actually help the, 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 the business get off the ground. And with that kind of expertise and skills, I think uh, the incubation in terms of models in terms of processes and particularly in terms of the advice role where we can actually use the systems technology and processes to elevate that I think would be put us a, a, sort of a step ahead of the, some of the other guys that maybe not think along the same lines Cornell. Yeah, Martin, 100%. So the, the reality is the barriers to entry for the insurance industry is, is very high. Uh, we have uh, so many regulatory bodies that looks after how we operate, what we do that it's quite important um, in order to be fair towards the customer that you provide all the fair services from the beginning to the end. So for someone that wants to enter the insurance market, can be quite a daunting task. So the way that we approach it is to partner with the company and take them through this journey in terms of insurance. And that specifically, I think, speaks to um, creating opportunities for for BE alternatives to, to be put into, into the market space, which is a crucial demand and something that we, that we have to get to. But, but it's, there's a struggle to, to enter the insurance industry. Do you start as a broker? Do you start as an underwriting manager? You might have an opportunity for a product, but you don't have the expertise to manage it and do the underwriting functions that's needed to perform um, in that business. So what we do is to try and find ways where we can walk a journey. And as the business mature, you might offer less of those services and the partner could be, become a lot more independent. And we've been quite successful in that model. 
It's actually an ecosystem. Yes, the intermediary acts for the customer, and yes, the underwriter acts for the insurer, but we're all part of one insurance channel and one class of business to ultimately have a very well-serviced customer with value in terms of the product and handle them very fair in the approach. Do you not think that in terms of that same ecosystem, I mean, so we understand the roles and responsibilities of peer, people across the, that uh, ecosystem where the underwriter is the interest of the insurer at heart, the, inter the intermediary needs to look after the interest of the policyholder. We need to build that bridge a little bit closer between the underwriter and the intermediary so that there's some sort of normality and some sort of uh, uh, consistency in terms of what we do in that particular space. And do you think from an advice point of view, that uh, we'd be able to bring those two parties a little bit closer together without complicating the, the sort of compliance requirements? I definitely think technology would provide you that opportunity to bring it much closer. As a matter of fact, if you give a broker access to an onboarding um, platform, which is part of your system, you have come closer to the broker. Um, all the rules are contained within the underwriting that, uh, that you as an underwriting manager would put out in the market, and the broker, broker would operate by onboarding a customer with a, the, within their parameters. But that also extends in terms of servicing the customer, them having access to policy details, being able to claim at least uh, on an app when the broker might not be available. So you're assisting the broker actually in his business by, by allowing technology to interact with the customer. So I think there's going to be a lot of focus uh, on that. If we reflect on 2020, and we're in the month of September now, uh, the last eight months has been an absolute nightmare for a lot of people. What it has also done is it's also provided opportunity for people to rethink their business. And one of the key things that we did right at the beginning is we did a lot of introspection in terms of not looking at the business, but working in the business. And we needed to make that differentiation. So, um, and I think that's empowered us a lot. And, and, and I think some of our intermediaries would have experienced it. And we're going through a bit of a transition at the moment in terms of underwriting platforms. But that has given us the ability to be able to be in a much stronger position going forward from a technology platform perspective. Because ultimately, this industry is going to be uh, completely dependent upon technology taking us forward and taking us to the next level. And in empowering us and empowering brokers and empowering IFAs and empowering the consumer to have this conversation and to have that interaction with us. Because ultimately, what you know, for, for us, our, our, our business is about the customer experience. So, um, so I think what we're trying to do is we are, uh, you know, sort of tagging onto our, our sort of tagline being future built, we've put all those platforms in place, we've put all those parameters in place and we've put those foundations in place which gives us a really strong platform to take it forward. What is left for us to do now is to obviously have a look at what we need to do from a customization perspective in certain classes of business and also in terms of certain brokerages in terms of the way we do things. Um, and, and, and again, just leveraging off the, the earlier conversation in terms of uh, partnerships. I mean, uh, I think one of the successes of Saraga over the past few years is our strong association and strong alignment with the insurer in terms of us looking at it as a collective as opposed to having this disjointed uh, approach where you know we run this business as a separate entity and uh, every now sort of six months we have a conversation with the insurer and there's this disconnect. Does it sort of sit well with you in terms of your overall sort of approach towards business? Yeah, I think technology should not only be an enabler, but it needs to create the opportunity for us to get closer to the to, to our customers. And, and, and in our world, we have two customers. We have a policyholder and we have a broker that serves them. And the focus for the future is going to be on our customers, the focus on our brokers, the focus on our customers, how we can give them journeys, how we can give them access to information a lot quicker, how we can give them access to claims processes, how we can give them access to the knowledge that we have that manages their risk a lot better. And that's going to be the, that's going to be the future. And within this like a vertical that we're operating in, technology enables us to do that. So if we can apply what we know from an underwriting perspective, from a risk perspective, which is really knowledge that's lying in people's heads uh, that they've accumulated through the years, do a lot of that as part of a process and of a system that's going to have an enhanced customer offering, which is to the brokers and, the, and, and our customers.